subscribe or this will happen to you. <laughs> yeah, you're not subscribed yet? Come on! Hi guys, I'm Tom Stoltman, I'm a professional strongman and my top 10 favourite moments in strongman are Number 10 for me is my first Scotland Strongest Man win The reason this is in my top 10 is because of great battles with myself and Luke for the years previous Luke was dominant in Scotland even since before I went on the scene I came on the scene and was creeping up every year and then I think it was the two years pr prior to me winning it I kept coming second and I was really close. So when I finally got that win, it was a relief. I felt bad, but I felt good because obviously Luke was going for a record five titles, but I had nicked the, the title off him and it stayed in the Stokeman household, but it went to his younger brother. And from that kind of moment on, I thought if I can win Scotland's, then I could go on to kind of more of the UK, British level, maybe kind of get up there into the worlds and stuff. So that was a very, very good moment for me. You know, I was really consistent, one, quite a lot of the events there as well and it felt it was just like a relief a big weight off my shoulders once I won my first one so that is number 10 for myself so number nine for me would probably be UK strongest man my first ever time competing there uh, the reason for this is because like Scotland and kind of that level that I was competing at didn't have much fans no TV behind the scenes stuff that you used that you see in the top of the strongman game obviously me being autistic I like that so Scotland was just compete go that kind of level was just competing then you get to go home when I broke onto the UK scene, you know, I deserved to be there, but it was the thing that I was more, most proud of at UK was facing the cameras, facing the bigger crowds, going from competing in front of 20 people to two, three thousand was a big, big step up for me. I didn't let it overwhelm me, you know, I was a young boy at the time I was competing there. And even just to be competing like, alongside Eddie Halls, my brother, Lauren Shalateri, all the, I think all those kind of top guys were there as well. So that was a special feeling. So to really break on that UK scene and then to really kind of get in front of the cameras and in front of like the commentators and doing the wee interviews after each event was a really cool thing for me and it was a kind of hurdle that I went over myself as well because you know obviously in my head I was like right for me to be a good strongman I need to face not just the events in strongman not be physically strong but mentally I needed to face that kind of side and you know that was kind of the first time I got the feel for that and I was out of my comfort zone but I kind of did it and it evolved quickly so. So number eight Again, this is another step up. This was my first Giants Live. So obviously I'd been to the UKs and stuff and you know, thought, all right, the TV stuff was gonna be fine, but Giants Live is a different ball game. We were in a big arena. I think it was a Doncaster or whatever. Before that, it was like oh, 10,000 people max. And for me, I was overwhelmed because I was like getting through a strobe lighting. There was people cheering. There was uh, just a big massive echo because there was, it was just in that big arena. You could hear everything. Again, that was a really proud moment for me because I was there with Luke when I kind of broke onto the scene big time then. Luke had already been on the scene, but that was a cool thing to do my first Giants live alongside Luke. And again, our superstars, you know, Eddie Hall, Lawrence Shelley, Terry Hollins, all the big massive guys that I watched on TV, I was now up against. So I'll always remember my first Giants live, you know, coming, I think it was even in the top six I was. So to even do that again, I hardly spoke a word for the interviews, the TV links, but I just put myself out there and I knew I was physically strong, but mentally, again, I needed to get used to the 10,000. You know, the step up from 2,000 to 10,000 was mental, but I was able to do it and I was very proud to do it. And yeah, Giants Live was a very, very fun first show for myself. First proper in the deep end show. So it was a cool, cool thing to be part of. So number seven is getting to World's Strongest Man. This was in Botswana, so again, New territory for me. I got there from qualifying as a reserve from Giants Live and uh, someone dropped out, so you know I was able to take their place. But anyway, that was a very special moment as well because again, I flew over there with Luke, competed there with Luke. For me at that time, I don't think I was really ready. It was a very overwhelming experience for me. I had never experienced so much TV stuff, so much promo and like I said, interviews before a competition. It was like we were there for four or five days before that and every day we had to do something for the TV. So it's getting used to that as well. But again, that's when I got to know the likes of Brian Shaw, Hafor Beyonce, Jerry Pritchett, you know, all them massive superstars that I was like a little kid next to. That was the first time I had experienced that kind of intensity in a competition, professionalism in a competition as well, the way every athlete went around it, about it, did their own things and stuff. And for me, it was just a learning curve, going out there, having fun and seeing what I do. Obviously, I didn't get past the final, but to be up there at such a young age to compete with Luke again, trying to adapt as an athlete, not physically more, but more mentally, and 
really get myself again out in that comfort, out that comfort zone and get my name out there more for everybody to see. And I really enjoyed that. Botswana was a great place, lovely people, and I love the Africans, you know, celebrating, dancing around, and it was just cool to be a very nice vibe. That's what you get, a world's strongest man. All the fans love the sport, and they just scream for you. Even if they don't know who you are, if they've never heard for you, they're just like, come on, Tom, come on, yeah, yeah. So that was a very fun competition to be part of. So my sixth favorite yeah. moment, my first ever 400 kilogram deadlift. Again, this was probably one of the most frustrating times because I was trying to get a 400 kg deadlift for a long, long time. I was trying to get it in junior level. I was trying to get it for a few years after competing as well. And so I was already on the scene at Giants Live and they had the deadlift world championships that were part of their show. I think it was my first or second time doing that. And like I said, I couldn't break 400 for the life of me. I could pull 380, 390. Was just getting very frustrated with it, nearly giving up. It just felt unbelievable to do something that I've worked hard for. And then I had to do it on, on the big stage. And this is when I was really worried. I think I remember 380 was the opening lift and I pulled that quite comfy. And then it went up to 400 and I was like, this is the big, my best chance to pull, you know, something that was at the time a decent level. And yeah, it happened, you know, I finally broke the 400K mark at the Giants Live Deadlift Championships. And it was a very good feeling. And as soon as I broke that, I kind of excelled after that. And 400 kg is a massive lift back then. And I was just so thankful to do it in a competition at like Giants. Number five is the uh, uh, world record stone attempt. Two records and one here. So it's the one at Arnold's and the one I did in my own gym. Obviously at this time when we were going to Arnold's, this is when the COVID situation was kicking in. So to even be able to compete and get an opportunity to do these, I was thankful for. Before I even looked at that stone, the 255 uh, was the kind of target for me. So anyway, the day came, did it and I just felt really good because I did it really easily and I just like remembered, you know, I have done it as a coach then as well and it just felt all that hard work in the gym paid off and then to even then go out and attempt the biggest, biggest stone he had there, I think it was the 265% or whatever it was and to then load that easily as well, I was already a big step in front of what I was where I was meant to be so, you know, to do that was an amazing feeling, the first person ever to do that and to have that record solely by myself and to break the record by a massive margin was a great feeling as well. And even to do it in front of Sinead, Luke, me, Simon, and a few other people was cool. A year afterwards, then was put on this record attempts that myself, Luke, and a few others did in the gyms. And it was good because I had something to aim for. And what I was going for there was 286 kilograms at the stone. And I trained, this is possibly the hardest like training cycle I've ever done in my life. You think training for a competition is hard, but training for one specific event for me was brutal. You know, I was like, <laughs> sleepless nights, hurting all the time, just blood, sweat and tears to go into this one kind of stone lift. Thankfully, I did it and it was a wee crowd, you know, had my dad, had some local people, had Simon, just had a lot of guys that I knew were close to me to come and watch me do it. And it was again a great feeling, the heaviest at the stone ever lifted. For me, the heaviest at the stone probably to be ever lifted. That was just a great feeling to be able to take that off my bucket list. We're going to be going on to bigger and better things now, but again, that was a really special moment to do that in, my, in, a, in a gym right here in the Invergy, in front of an online audience. It was a great, great feeling. So guys, number four is my second podium at Britain's Strongest Man, where I came runner up. The reason I chose this is because obviously I shared the platform with Luke and Bishop. We were like really, really close with Bishop and it was great just to share the platform with those two guys. Obviously, I wanted to in any other, uh, other way, but it is what it is. I, I felt really good there because it was an improvement from the year before. The year before I came third, then that year I came second, and then I just wanted to keep improving. As long as I keep improving the sport, I was very happy with my performance there as well. That is probably my favorite Britain's Strongest Man as well to date was that, that Britain's Strongest Man that we just did, uh, the one I came second in. The crowd was loud. It was just breathtaking just to be part of it, so. That would be my number four choice. Number three is the stone run that I did against Luke at Europe's Strongest Man. This was a very, very epic. Could have shoveled these around a bit, but just for this one event, you know, Europe's Strongest Man was a great show. We had performed good, but I've never ever seen anything like it. So I was doing a stone run with Luke. This, I think this was the first time ever as well that me and Luke had been against each other in stones. And I think it's the only time we've been together against each other, sorry, in stones, except from Scotland's. We were doing the stones. I was, all, I was onto the last one, I think he, was onto the second last one. I loaded my last one and then went and celebrated a wee bit and then went and looked at Luke and he had his last stone to do and he was trying to lift it off the floor. I think his sleeves, his stone sleeves kept sliding and stuff and I think he was going to give up. So I went over and started like shouting at him, shouting at him and then, you know, he squeezed it. He came up a wee bit and then I shouted at him more and it came up. So he got it onto his lap, put it up onto the platform 
And it was then when, as soon as that moment came, that the noise in the stadium, holy. They felt like there was 50,000 people there. I've never experienced noise like that in my life. We had goose pumps up our arms. We were fist pumping each other. We chest pumped each other. So that moment's gonna live in my uh, scrapbook in my head for a long, long time, because that was a very, very cool moment. You could see how much it meant to me and Luke just to, for Luke finishing that, you could see how much, how much it meant to the crowd. Everybody just was on their feet. Everyone had tears in their eyes, the other competitors, the Giants Live guys, everybody. So that was a very, 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 very great moment in Stroma. So number two would be runner up at World's Strongest Man 2020. Uh, so this is my second choice, obviously because the biggest show in Strongman. To go out to kind of do what I set out to do and come second was a great achievement. You know, I last the year before I came fifth, so in my head I was like, I was wanting podium to come second, but to know that I kind of won four of the six events, that one event kind of stopped me from winning World's Strongest Man. It's a great feeling, you know, for me, if I had held on to the Hercules or didn't drop the anvil, I could be sitting here as World's Strongest Man. I knew that I was like, kind of dominant in the final as well. Like winning events that I never thought I'd win, Law Press, for example. I won the keg toss, events that I didn't expect to win, I won. It was just a great moment. It was the only thing that was missing was not having Sinead there, not having obviously our, all, all our family there to witness it, but she was watching it on FaceTime, the kind of last stone run, and it was just a, a, an amazing feeling to kind of have that goal and to hit it and to do it like with no one around me, to have Luke there to support me as well and to have him by my side was a great feeling and that is something that's going to live in my head for a long, long time. Just knowing that that was probably my most consistent competition, except from that one wee slip up, or even that, just because my Hercules hold gave up. Yeah, apart from that, I just loved every minute of it, and that's going to live in my head for a very, a very, a very, a very long time. The rest of my career, 100%. Number one all-time favorite moment in Strawman, 100% was when me and Luke got to the final World Strongest Man. We had our families out there with us this time, so it was a great feeling. We had our dad there as well. We had both got to this last man standing stone. The most the funniest thing was Bishop went out first, he got through, then Luke went up against Rob Kearney, and that was an epic battle. And then he got through, and then kind of him getting through and then seeing kind of like the emotions thrown as that really got me fired up and pumped up. Even for I'm called the King of the Stones and stuff, I was really nervous. You know, I, I wore stone sleeves as well, which I'd never ever worn. And it was just a last minute decision for me because I've seen a lot of people slip. That really saved me because Ivar's is a very good stone lifter, but I knew that I'd always do one more than anybody that's at the other bar of me. I had that belief that I'd always do one more rep, and I did. When Ivar's couldn't get that stone back over, what a relief. Again, I ran straight to the shade. Everyone was crying, Kushi, Shared, Dad, Luke. And it was just a very special moment to kind of have the first brothers to ever do that in the history of Strawman at the biggest show, you know, it's, there's no other show in Strawman that's bigger than World's Strongest Man. So to, for myself and Luke to do that in the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, there's no one that's ever going to forget that. It's still getting talked about now. It's still up there with like the greatest Strawman moments in history. To have two people from the same household, from the same uh, area, especially, you know, and if you had said that to myself when I first started Strawman or when Luke started Strawman, that you and Tom or you and Luke are going to be the first brothers to ever get to a Strawman final, we would have just laughed. So, yeah, that's a moment that's going to live again in my head forever. And I still think about it right now. I still watch the last man standing stones. I still watch the wee tribute videos that they put out that year for my mum. You know, it's, it was, everyone was just came together there and it was a very special moment. So guys, that was my top 10. Completed it, mate. <laughs> hey. So guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was spicy. Stay safe, smile and stay spicy. And don't forget to ring that little bell. Ding dong, ding 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 dong dong.